Hello everyone, and today we're going to be continuing our bathroom series. I believe this is episode 7, maybe 8. Um, so now we're going to model our faucet for our uh, bathroom. So faucet's going to be pretty straightforward. It's basically just a cylinder. Um, I'm actually going to be modeling it based off one of the uh, faucets in my own home, so it shouldn't be too complicated. So first off, we're going to add another object to our scene. So we're going to hit Shift A. We're going to add a cylinder. It adds it right there. Um, it looks like it's keeping off the end caps, and it's going to be 16 vertices, as you can see over here. So that's fine. We're going to close that. So now we need to position it. Actually, we're going to shrink it first. So we're going to hit Tab S, scale it down a bit, um, and then we're going to hit Scale Z. We're going to scale it up a little bit, just so it's a bit bigger, and we're going to move it over there to the uh, table. So we're going to click the red dot. This should have this by now. Um, I'm going to make sure that my proportional scaling is off for whatever reason that was on. Um, I'm going to drag this over here. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to switch over here to the side view. And we're going to have it be on the right side of the sink. Okay. Um, I still think that's a little too big, so I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to hit S. I'm going to hit X. And I'm going to hit Shift Z. So that we're just we're scaling without the z-axis. That looks fine. Um, I'm gonna hit tab to get out of edit mode, and I'm gonna move it over. I'm gonna have it right here. That looks fine. Maybe we should move the bowl up a little bit. There we go. I think that looks fine. So now. Let's see, how should we go at this? Um, if we were to model it like one in my personal bathroom, that might look a little strange. Um, we'll model it a little, little, bit, little, diff little bit differently, so we'll introduce some new tools. So what I want to do is I want to kind of spin it into a bowl into kind of a candy cane shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit 5 on our numpad. Or you can uh, click this little grid up here, and we're going to switch into orthographic. So we were normally in perspective, so you can see the perspective of everything. But when we're in orthographic, it looks a lot more blocky, and uh, it's basically just without the perspective, so it's easier to see things. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Tab, and we're going to zoom in a bit, and we're going to hit Alt A to deselect everything, and we're going to Alt click this ring of loop, rings, ring of edges up here, and make sure we're in edge select mode. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of angle it so that um, basically we're going to use the spin tool which is going to spin this edge like this. So what we need to do is we kind of need to line up the camera to like there being a plane that's slicing um, this bowl in half. It's, it's kind of hard to explain but you should be able to see what I'm poking at in a sec. So now that I'm kind of like lined up to the corner of the table like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a 3D cursor mode and I'm just going to click right about here. So basically I move that 3D cursor, you can kind of see it. It's a bit over there, but that should be fine. Uh, but as long as it's right about there above the sink. Um, let's actually move it a little bit right here. And I'm going to have to tinker with this because I can't quite remember how it um, works. But, uh, Okay, so I believe spin might have been moved, so I'm going to double check real quick. Um, now you see in this case I can't actually find the spin tool, it used to be on the left. Um, but that's, oh yeah, there it is, so spin. So watch, so now that our 3D cursor is right there, we're going to kind of imagine it spinning around like this. So I might have to move the 3D cursor, but what we're going to do is we're going to hit this spin tool right here. And you can see this pops up. This is a bit new. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit um, wrong. But you can see how it's where the 3D cursor is. So I'm going to hit Alt or Control Z to undo that. Um, I'm going to hit Control Z again. And so we're still in the spin mode. So what we need to do is we need to go back to the 3D cursor mode. And I'm going to click. Maybe we should click on the bowl right there. That might help. Um, and we're going to go back into the spin mode. Now I think what we need to do is, um, let's see here. Let me just kind of tweak with this a little bit more. Okay, I think we just need to uh, rotate it. 
So we're going to click, we're going to go back in this perspective and we're going to click. And then we're going to click on, we're going to make sure those uh, faces are all selected. So Alt click. And it actually that looks like it's in a much better spot. So now we're going to click the spin tool. And if we go over here, we can actually change the way it spins. So clicking on this tool right here while we have spin active, we can change which axis it goes around, which this is what I was looking for. So we want it to go around, I believe, the X axis might work. And we can always rotate it. So if you look, so the 3D cursor is right there, and we set it to X axis spin. So when we drag it, you can see there's that spinning motion. So now it looks like a candy cane, kind of. That actually looks perfect. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And when, when you're done with it, you should be able to just click off of it, and it will apply the transformation. So you can see we kind of have this candy cane-like like candy cane -like structure. And when we're done, we'll uh, rotate it a bit. But uh, for right now, what we need to do is I'm going to make it a bit easier to tweak this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, while it's selected, hit Shift-H, and that'll hide everything but the selected object. And I'm going to hit period on my numpad to focus on it. So now it's a bit easier to uh, navigate it. So I'm going to go back into edit mode, and I'm going to close off this top right here now. Since the camera won't see the bottom of it, what I'm going to do is I'm just literally going to close it with a triangle fan. And you'll see what that means in a second. So with this ring selected, I'm going to hit E, and then I'm going to right click. So what I just did was I extruded, but I didn't move the faces because I right clicked. So if I hit G, you can see there's the faces that I just extruded, but I'm going to right click again so they're still there. So after we make this new set of rings, even though they're on top of the other edges, what we can do is while they're still selected, make sure you didn't click off of them. If you did, you can just control Z undo and then re-extrude them. Um, but now that they're selected, I'm going to hit Alt and then hold down Alt and then press M. And then what this will do is it'll merge them. So I'm going to hit Merge at Center. And what it does is it'll merge them all to the center and it makes this triangle-like shape. Um, so I'm going to do that one more time just so you can kind of see what was going on. So this is without the faces extruded. So I'm going to Alt click. I'm going to hit E to extrude. Right click to deselect. And I'm going to hold down Alt and then press M. I'm going to hit Merge at Center. So see, we just kind of cop uh, we just kind of uh, close that uh, edge off. So that looks good. And then I'm going to hit Tab to go out of edit mode. I'm going to hit Alt H. Now this is going to bring back everything in our scene. So I'm just going to quick rehide this box real quick. So I'm going to click on the box. I'm just going to click this little eye icon over here. Click on this box. Hit the eye again. So now we can zoom back in on our shape. So you see it still kind of has that polygon shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to hit Object. And then I'm going to hit Shade Smooth. And that actually... I want it to be a lot smoother because it's going to, it needs to look like a nice smooth cylinder. So... I'm going to go Object and uh, Shade Flat. That's how you undo that. And I'm going to add another subdivision surface for this one. Um, and we only really need one division because we just kind of need some more geometry to help smooth it out. But uh, you notice at the end it looks kind of weird. Um, but uh, you'll notice that if I grab this object, you don't have to do this. But if I move it up, um, since there's no bottom faces, it doesn't try to smooth out the bottom. So we don't have to add any supporting edge loops. But we do need to add some for the top because uh, I uh, I added those triangle fans earlier. So all we have to do is to tab into edit mode, hit Control R to add an edge loop, and we're just going to slide it down. And it also will make it a bit uh, flatter if we do it on the uh, inside too. But uh, you can't actually add an edge loop here with this triangle fan, so we kind of need to tweak it a bit. So I'm going to go and do vertex select. I'm going to click on this uh, thing that we created. I'm going to hit X and delete the vertice. So we're back to square one that we were at originally, and I'm going to alt click this this ring. You can also do it. You can also alt click this ring in the vertex select. It's basically the same thing. I'm going to hit E, and then I'm going to uh, click. I'm going to right click, and then I'm just going to scale it in a bit, and then. So, so you see, there's our supporting edge. So then I'm going to hit E one more time, and then I'm going to hit Alt M and then merge at center. And you see, we created that supporting loop. So now it looks a lot uh, flatter there. And then I'm just going to go Object, um, Shade Smooth, and then that looks a lot better. And um, like I said, this is just fake geometry. So if we want to make it smoother, we can uh, bump it up right here. And actually, if you look under Render, it's already shaded up to two. So we actually don't even need to really worry about it because it'll be a higher res in our render anyway so I'm just gonna control s real quick to save the scene 
Um, and let's just rotate this since we can. So I'm, we can do this in object uh, mode. Er, yeah, we can do it in object mode. So I'm going to hit R and then Z. So we locked on the Z axis. I'm just going to rotate it a bit. And now it's right over our sink. So it looks a little cartoonish because it's pretty big, but I think it'll be fine for our scene. So as you can see, we already have a sink and a, a, we have a sink and a faucet set up. So now I'm going to kind of tidy up this uh, table down here. So I'm going to select this object and shift click that object and hit H to get rid of it. And then for this one, we kind of want to um, make all these edges a bit smoother. So we can do that quickly with uh, one simple tool or one simple modifier. So I'm going to go over to the modifier tab. I'm going to click to add a modifier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bevel modifier. And you'll see it adds, it's add, it kind of adds some weird uh, new edges on everything. But uh, we, we actually only wanted to add um, bevels on like those really sharp edges. So what we can do is we can go to limit method, or yeah, limit method, and we're going to select angle. And then we're going to leave it at 30. So I believe with this one it's any angle that's more than 30 it'll try to apply a bevel to. I'm not too sure, but uh, basically we could tweak it if we had to. Um, th it should be fine with 30 though because we have really sharp edges on this one. We don't have to like worry about it. If we had like 30 degree edges that we wanted to be sharp or less, you know, we could fix it that way. But anyways, that's fine. And then now what we want to do is we want to uh, bump up the segments. So if I go into wireframe, you might be able to see it. So see, we only added one one uh, extra face with the bevel modifier. But if we add another segment, you'll see we add another piece of geometry there. So we're going to want to bump it up to three. So you can see how there's more uh, geometry on those edges. And if I go back, hit Z, hit solid, um, you can see that it looks a lot better. And when we go, and the reason we did this is because if I turn off the bevel modifier real quick, one, it's infinitely sharp. And two, if we go to uh, shade smooth see how like glitchy and broken it looks it's because it's trying to average 90 degree angles um which isn't good because it's hard to make something like that look smooth you'll see all that weird shading stuff but i turn on if i turn on the bevel modifier you'll see it looks really nice it does look a little smooth a little too smooth on the edges but what we can do is we can go over to the width right here and if we hold down shift and then slide this we can actually uh shrink these uh edges so you see if i set the, um, Hold on, let me see here real quick. Um, yeah, so you see, um, if I really start uh, rotating it, we can see this is no bevel, and then the, you can change the width. So we're just going to give it a slight bevel, about 2.005 feet. Um, and if you wanted to make it even more beveled, you can turn off clamp override, and then you can see you can make it really beveled, but obviously the reason the clamp override is there is so you don't get this weird geometry. You see when we turn this on, it won't let the bevel modifier mess with that. So um, Usually you don't want to do such a big bevel modifier to many little objects altogether, but in this case, since most of them are flat and we just want to add a slight bevel, it's okay. So I'm going to lower this bevel width again, and that should be fine. So. You can see how much better that looks if I, if I again switch between them. It looks a lot better. Because obviously in, in the real life, nothing is infinitely sharp like that. So we're just going to leave that there. We don't actually have to apply that. So you can see we can keep the simple geometry while making it look really nice. So that looks good. Um, I'm going to hit Alt-H so you can see everything's back. And uh, the reason this is uh, blocking my view again is because I turned off back face culling. If I turn that back on, we can actually see inside again. So, yeah. So you can see we have this uh, little sink set up. So, let's see. Yep, we're about at the 15 minute mark. So, that's it for this video. And the next one, uh, we're going to be making a bathtub. And I'm going to be making that a lot quicker than I did with the sink since it's basically the same process. I might actually be able to borrow the sink. Um, and we're also going to add windows. And if we have time, we'll try to add lighting. So, Thanks for watching. That's it for this video. Um, and if you have any comments, please leave them below. Have a good one.